good morning dear friends it is the new day the lord has given us each day is a very precious gift from god in fact each moment of our life is very precious and uh, as we begin this day before we do anything else let us spend a few minutes with the lord meditating on his word today's meditation is called the inner life of the man god uses based on the life of daniel the prophet and the scripture verse for this is daniel chapter 1 verse 8 daniel was only a teenager when he was brought to babylon now the babylonians were a very a uh, brutal people and very strange in their sense of uh, um, justice and moral life yet during the years of his uh, captivity this man served in the highest positions and served under pagan kings A remarkable thing about Daniel was that in the most unfavorable circumstances he was unbending in his uh, principles who worshiped the one true living God. We can learn much by looking into the inner life of Daniel. to find out the secret of his success daniel the first thing to notice about his life was this man his purity of life that is the first thing that we notice about daniel daniel chapter 1 verse 8 became the foundation and principle on which daniel built his entire life this verse says daniel resolved in other words daniel determined very strongly that he was not going to defile himself by eating the royal food that was brought to him and served which was of course uh non veg now there is nothing wrong with the meat if we eat but what was the problem that daniel found out was before they served they used to offer this food to their idols to their gods and that is what made daniel to take such a strong resolution and it is very important therefore for those who know the one true god that he is holy and uh, while food with meat was not the problem the problem was where the food goes first before it is served it went before their gods which are not god in reality to disobey royal order or royal command meant certain death but daniel insisted to keep himself pure by eating only vegetables and pulses and he even requested the man in charge of their training uh, for the future and uh, in charge of all their affairs that for 10 days you try us don't give us the meat or anything just to give us vegetables and with pulses here is daniel he took a stand 
for the glory of God and he dared to be different to honor Jehovah God and here is one point in which i want to say this to all of you who are listening the true followers of Jesus Christ is unlike any other people if you are genuine born again baptized spirit filled because our god is unlike any other gods there is no other god like our god and to take a stand for this god who said i am holy and so my people must be holy you need courage and determination no matter what it cost it is such kind of disciples of jesus followers of jesus that we need in india today who will take a strong strong stand and uh, dare to be different for god's glory and he does honored god and the bible says anyone who honors god god will honor him remember that we all like to be honored we like to be recognized and uh, called our name to receive a special award for something we like to be thus honored who doesn't want but let me ask you this how about you desiring to be honored by your god I don't know one thing about God honored person when God honors he honors and he lifts him up and uh, God honored his children and bless him and his friends with a higher IQ and uh, greater physical and mental capacity and abilities God honors those who honor him my friends because God rewards those who humbly serve him and honor him so remember this no wonder in all circumstances Daniel remained true to his resolution and thus the one who arrived in babylon as a teenager lived to be about 95 years and served under four emperors in the highest of positions and that is something that you and i must remember the second thing that we notice about daniel is not only he was pure and holy the second thing to note is his humility daniel chapter 2 verses 27 to 30 here is a situation when nebuchadnezzar the king saw a dream but in the morning he forgot the dream and the and and he did not know therefore the meaning of that so he called all his wise men among whom was daniel also and uh, he demanded that they tell him what the dream was and then tell him what the interpretation of the dream now something that is unreasonable uh, to ask no matter how wise a person may be he may be able to interpret but he cannot remember he will not know what dream the king had and when all the other wise men came and heard this daniel was not there and so the order was given let all the wise men be killed and they were searching for daniel as well because he was the top wise man and when it was told to him he requested the man the soldier you please request the king to give us 3 days or some time which was granted 
And during these days, Daniel went to his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and told them the case and asked them to fast and pray. And all four of them prayed, kneeling before God. And then God gave Daniel what the dream was, gave the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, and also the interpretation. So Daniel was brought to the king, and the king was surprised to hear the dream and also the interpretation. But when the king demanded him what he should do, um, Daniel's response was this. King, honorable majesty, the king, there is no man on earth who can fulfill what you are asking us to do. No man, including myself. And then he said, but there is a God whom I serve. He will reveal. And then he told the king what the dream and the interpretation. And then king honored him and promoted him and made him great. But here is the thing that I want to mention here. Look at the humility of Daniel. You know, he could have taken all the credit. But he was simply content by giving all the credit to Jehovah God, whom he worshipped and whom he served. A humble spirit is the hallmark of a man whom God uses. First Peter chapter 5 verses 5 and 6. That's what we read. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time God will exalt you. And then it also says, God resist the proud, but to give grace to the humble. Humble yourself before God, therefore, and in due time, God will lift you up. What a wisdom. And what a great, a proud spirit is deadly. It can cause two um, dreaded diseases. Number one, Ignorance. Ignorance makes a person to ignore good counsel and advice. And the second disease is insecurity. The reason for ungodly behavior and pride is a sense of insecurity. The reason is insecurity feeling. And so one would like to project himself as someone. And so he behaves as if he is everything. And it is all because of insecurity. When you know who you are and what you are, even if you do some menial job, it doesn't affect you. Because you know who you are. Anyone who knows our God, he doesn't have to feel any insecure. Insecurity is a sign of not only lack of trust in God or belief or faith in God, but also uh, it, it, is, it is because of the ignorance of uh, who God is and who you are and uh, to whom you should connect. Uh, you don't know. You think you have to manage your own life and so you make a mess of yourself. So these two diseases are dangerous because the pride in our life. The third characteristic of the 
inner life of a person whom God uses is faith. Now Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Now without, without faith it is impossible to please God. For anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. I want you to take note of that earnest, the word earnestness. It is not a casual seeker or a careless seeker uh, or namesake seeker who shall receive anything from God. You need to be sincere. You need to be earnest in seeking God and you will find him. And you will find him good all the time. You know what that means? It means that we believe that God will provide. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, My God, Paul says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And if you can measure the riches of God, then you must be some, something equal to God. My friends, no one can measure or calculate the riches, how rich God is. He, everything he created, nothing exists to which he has not created. Everything belongs to him. And you know, remember, Abraham's answer to his son Isaac as they were climbing the mountain, Father, we have everything needed for the sacrifice, but the most important part of our sacrifice is missing. Where is the lamb? And Abraham's answer was, God will provide. And that is where we get the word Jehovah Jireh. Because Abraham prophetically gave that answer. And God did provide. Praise be to his name. And it means we believe that Christ is absolutely trustworthy. That is faith. A faith that Christ is absolutely trustworthy. He is faithful to his promises. He will not leave us nor reject us. He will always be there for us. And the Bible says, the psalmist says, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is with us, what can man do? And remember, God will never fail. Faith also means we believe that God's power will never fail. God's power is more than sufficient for us. And as I close, remember three, three, these three characteristics of a man whom God uses. Purity, humility, and faith. Develop these characteristics which you cannot develop by yourself, but then God has given you Holy Spirit, our helper. And with his help, and he has also given us the word with his promises. Trust in him. He will never fail. God bless you as you make your decision to honor God in every situation. Father, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for revealing the secret of being uh, successful and great, even in the sight of the world because we humble ourselves before you. We thank you for giving us the grace to do the right thing in order to please you and honor you in everything. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my dear friends. This is a wonderful day and enjoy the day and have a great day, amen.